What's going on? I'm so excited that we were able to find each other because I want to tell you guys, I was in the same exact situation that you were in four years ago when I just finished playing basketball at a small Division three school up in Washington called Whitman College and I was trying to figure out what on earth I was going to do next. At that point in time, I was thinking about possibly going and playing overseas and really when I started looking at the numbers, it just didn't make sense to me on paper. Uh, the amount of money that could have potentially been made, 20000 to $60,000 a year, I felt like I needed to get my career rolling. The only problem, I had no idea what that even meant and I had no idea who to reach out to. But it seemed to me that all of my friends were figuring this out and I was the only one who couldn't. And so I decided that I was going to go and start figuring this out on my own. Now I make it sound pretty easy that I was just gonna go out there and do it, but once basketball ended, it took me about 15 to 30 days to actually put in the work to start getting this thing rolling. So with about two months before I graduated and walked across to grab my diploma and leave with no job at all, I decided and realized that I might as well start doing the work. So I started out on my own and after a 30 minute Google search, trying to figure out what the best possible jobs were, I found out that there were really only five jobs and four of them were terrible and I hadn't, didn't want to do them ever and that left me with one option so I was going to go be a financial planner. And the reason that I wanted to do it was because it kind of aligned with some of the goals that I wanted. I wanted to be able to go and build my own business. I wanted to be in sales because that's what people were telling me was something that I would be able to excel in. And ultimately it was something that was going to provide me a large paycheck. People told me that I was gonna be able to make a lot of money. And at that point in time, I believe that success was measured by the amount of money that you can make. So looking back, I wanted to make sure that all those people that went and played overseas were going to be sorry and look at me and realize that they should have been doing what I was doing the entire time. Now that was on the outside. Inside, I was terrified. I felt like I had no direction at all. I really didn't know what I was doing, but I decided that I would do the best with what I had. So I started putting together a resume off of some things that I found online of how I should be putting it together. I wrote together a cover letter talking about that I was a former basketball player and I applied to all the financial planning jobs that I could possibly find. I get my first call back uh, for an interview in Seattle, Washington, which is about four and a half hours away from Walla Walla. And I go on the interview and it was going along and they started asking me questions and I was doing my best to field them. And it probably, some of the answers were a little bit shorter uh, than they could have been. Some of them could have used a little bit better explanations. But what really hit home was when they started asking me about the company and why it was that I wanted to work there and really not having an answer at all. Bottom line, that interview was atrocious. Honestly, I'm surprised that after looking at my resume and cover letter, they even wanted to interview me. But I knew that I needed to start getting better at this interview thing. So I, stepped, I just kept practicing. Uh, every single person that I talked to basically told me that with zero experience and with no network where I wanted to move, it would be very tough to get a job. So I ended up going on about seven other interviews until I finally got to my last one, which ended up being in Scottsdale, Arizona. And this was my, basically my last chance of all the jobs that I had applied for to get a job and walk across that stage with my diploma knowing that I wasn't going to have to go live at home and have a job actually. So I go there and now I did my research on the company. I'm fielding all the questions correctly and I'm, I feel like it's going really well. I'm laying out this plan of how I'm gonna build my network. I'm talking about how I'm gonna wake up early and play golf to meet people in the community. I'm going to go to work and shadow for the first three or four hours and then I'm gonna study and start getting my credentials that I need to get. And then at the end of the day, I'm gonna go work at this other part-time job that's gonna fund 
this golf adventure that I'm going to start and be able to allow me to meet more people in Scottsdale so that I could grow my business. They tell me that everything was going well and that they would give me a call back with the answers. And I'm on my way back to hop on that plane to go back to Walla Walla, Washington, hoping that this was the answer. And before I boarded that plane, I got that call and that call could have gone one of two ways. And I pick up the phone and they say, Matt, after carefully reviewing everything, we think that what you need is to come to Scottsdale, if this is something that you wanna do. And since you don't have a network or experience, you're gonna to need to come here and work at Starbucks for six months and then come back. And at that point, I'm sure that we'll be able to offer you a job. So I'm hopping on the plane. Can't believe that this is actually happening to me, that after all the trust that I had put into the systems off of being in a program for so long and devoting my life to something that I loved and having everyone tell me that it was going to take care of itself, it actually wasn't at all. This was going to be a disaster. So I'm hopping on the plane and I'm going home and I start to realize that there must be something that I'm doing wrong. There must be something that's not right. How are all these other people able to get their foot in the door when they have just not any more experience than I have? So at that moment when I got off that plane, I realized that I needed to start asking for help. So the first person that I got involved with was my head coach. Uh, I talked to assistant coaches. I basically told everyone that I could possibly tell my family, cousins, aunts, uncles, all these people that I was looking for a job in the financial realm. And if they knew anyone, please, I would love a chance to just pick their brain and talk to them and figure out how I can get my foot in the door in this industry. So people started actually hearing me out. People actually started giving me a chance to actually crack a few doors open. And eventually it got to the point where my head coach uh, had a connection and it was someone who was actively growing their business in San Diego. And it wasn't in the exact industry that I wanted to get into, but it was an amazing opportunity. And the relationship that was there was basically, hey, if you want this job and you don't make a complete fool of yourself, you're gonna be able to get a job. So I go on the interview. I end up coming and shadowing in San Diego where I'm at now. Uh, it was the most amazing experience and it was, it was amazing. And I knew that that is exactly what I wanted to do and I could have never gotten there without asking for some help. Flash forward two and a half, three years later, I am fully into the sales industry. And for the first six months of working in the sales industry, I had to learn what my product was. And in the mortgage industry, it was it's very important to actually know what you're talking about when you're dealing with something of such mass value for people. It's people that are putting up their entire savings down on a house. How are they gonna trust you with your money if you don't understand the product? So for six months, I spent getting to work at 5.30 in the morning to learn this industry. And after six months, I finally had the opportunity to go out there and actually try and start making where the big money was at in the sales end part of it. And I remember going to that first networking event, hopping out of the car in my suit, feeling so good and like walking in. And it was basically like one of those, that first dance that you ever go to. You decide to, to walk in, you start checking out the scene, kind of see if anyone's kind of wandering around as well, trying to make some eye contact here and there. And there were 30, 40 people in that room. And I remember taking that first lap, looking around, trying to find someone to lock eyes with, maybe talk to, nothing. I'm like, all right, let's give it another go. You know, it's just the first lap, we'll see what happens. So get to one end of the room, I come back the second time, trying to do the same thing, looking around, trying to see if anyone's kind of searching as well. Get to the second side and think that this is terrible. The, it's just like that anxiety in my stomach of like being out there. And I decided for the rest of 20 minutes that I was there that I would act like I was super busy on my phone when really I had nothing at all going on. So 
at that point I realized that there was really only one thing that I knew how to do and knew how to do well and that was to practice. So I cracked open books and I started reading and doing all the things that people were telling me and the mentor that I had was influencing me and telling me what to pick up, what to read, what to be doing, what to be researching, how to be conducting myself. And I started watching people do cold calls. I started watching people in their conversations. I started picking up on habits. I started practicing with myself in front of the mirror. I started recording conversations to come back and visit later. And after all of this practice, I finally got a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And in 2018, I decided that if anything comes in my head that you just have to jump and go and do it. And that was one of the things that might have been holding me back and that's what I decided was going to take my sales career to the next level, but I was not sure of what the direction would actually look like. So I'm there and in 2018, I'm reading this book and it's probably the fourth or fifth time I've seen something say that I should be journaling. So I pick up a pen after a crappy day and I'm like, you know what, people keep telling me to do this journal thing, I'm just gonna go for it and do it. So I start journaling and I'm talking about how crummy this day was and like how people are you know, out to get me, making fun of me, blah, 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 blah. And I end up tying it back to sports and after 10 minutes of writing, I realized that the intimidation factor that I was feeling and the uncertainty that I had about myself should have been solidified through my experiences playing sports and that I had actually gone through it thousands of times before and I probably have more experience than the people that I was actually afraid of coming face to face with. So it gave me a lot of confidence in the skills that I had and the skills that I was trying to get better at. And I started journaling every single day. And I felt like I was alone in this venture and that I was growing uh, to this new thing that I was becoming. and. I decided one day that I was just gonna throw it up on Facebook, that I was going to post one of these journals that I had. I must have really been feeling myself and I just posted it and I turned my phone off, went to bed. And I posted it because I wanted people to see where I was at and allow them to understand that this kind of like alone feeling that I had from being a an athlete, a former athlete. So I wake up the next day and I pop up on my phone and I have comments from players that I used to play with that were on my team. I had players that I used to play against in college that posted on this thread. I had people that I hadn't seen in 10 years that I used to play with back in the AAU days that were commenting and being like, this is exactly what I needed to see. We want more of it. So, Right after that, I decided that, you know what? Maybe it's not just me. Maybe it's not something that only I'm going through. And I decided that I was going to start a podcast and I launched the Untold 98%. At that point in time, Kobe Bryant was kind of finishing his retirement. And there were all these things coming out about how Kobe Bryant had made more money investing in Under Armour than he ever did in his playing career in his entire life. And I was like, that is a bunch of crap because I don't care what Kobe Bryant does to invest with his money. I want to know people that were in my shoes, the majority of athletes, what is going on with them? And so that is why I started the Untold 98%. So I started interviewing athletes. I ended up interviewing over 60 athletes, trying to figure out what their transition was like, just so that they had a voice and a pedestal to stand on, make sure that people understood that this is something that is going unnoticed. So after 60 interviews of publishing, I realized that I was really just pointing to a problem and not really doing anything to solve it. So at that point in time, I felt that it was obligated and something pulling me in that direction to where I needed to see this all the way through. I needed to figure out what was going on and provide a solution to all these athletes that are going through the same exact thing. So I decided that I was going to quit my job and fully immerse myself into the career, finding a career. So I ended up, what I did was I found, it was originally gonna be 25 dream companies, it ended up being 28, just because there are so many great companies out there, I finally had to say stop, that's it. I 
started going through and reaching out to a bunch of different people that were working in the in those different companies, trying to start talking to them, just like I had for financial planning and trying to open a few doors and try and build some relationships. I ended up testing countless resumes, counting against different cover letters and applied to over 400 different jobs just to test different resumes and what people are looking at. I went on over 200 interviews in a span of 30 days and then I also got 15 job offers and six of those 28 dream companies said that when we have a spot available or when you're ready to apply, we will send your resume to the top. And that is the solution and that is a creation of the Transitioning Athletes Playbook. What it is is a 30 day challenge. Uh, and when I say challenge, it's because it's not going to be easy. And if you decide to take this leap of faith with me, I'm gonna coach you through the same exact thing that I did to get to that position over 30 days. And it is going to take you through starting to figure out where it is that you wanna go. It's gonna take you through the skills that no one is teaching you as an athlete with not a ton of experience in terms of resumes and cover letters. It's gonna walk you through the ways to network, interview, and at the very end, we're gonna talk about how we're gonna be able to negotiate a salary, and it is going to allow you to start moving in direction to find that dream job and the career you always wanted. Because as a college athlete, and as an athlete in general, you have pushed yourself so hard and you understand what it takes to be successful. Only three and a half percent of high school athletes end up making it to the college level. And honestly, to be successful as after a college athlete, I don't think that you need to be a pro. I don't think that it might mean millions of dollars playing in a professional league. Being part of that three and a half percent you should be able to stay in that three and a half percent. And that is exactly what I want to do with you. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, I am so excited to help thousands of athletes just like myself and bring them up to speed and give them these tools and tricks that no one is talking to them about and really put it into a finite 30 day course to get you everything you need. So look forward to going on the next challenge with all of you and getting to know you all a little bit better.